I just can't believe this shit sometimes. I just screw up so many times. I just did a video. I just walked from the house, did a video here. Battery's running out. My God. Okay, so I'm doing something new because all my projects from the beginning of the year have been uh, spoken for. Uh, Marksbury's Cove article. Uh, uh, Quebec Street Yards article. Fun City, the North Carolina project, article. So a lot of these things uh, have to be restrictive in the short term so that I can get these projects out and keep the copyrights uh, for the publisher's uh, square. I can't be showing off something that uh, other people are gonna have to buy. So uh, that's them's the bricks. So anyways, what I'm gonna be doing for you now instead is uh, something called the Proto Review. I hope the wind's not screwing me up here. A Proto Review. So my first review is gonna be a snowplow, a Russell snowplow. Fitting, I think, you know. We're surrounded by snow in the Canadian winter. And uh, I'm gonna be doing a snowplow. Uh, and, but the thing is, is that I got sponsors so that uh, some of the future kits that I do, some of them won't be done like I do this uh, snowplow. I have two sponsors. One wants me to send the kits back after the review. The other sponsor said that I can keep the kits uh, because they know whatever, blah, blah, blah. So uh, the ones that I get to keep, I'm gonna find a prototype picture and we're going to weather the bugger as nice as we can. I've been practicing for the last month and I'm getting fairly comfortable with it. So uh, I'm gonna shut this camera off because my hand's freezing and uh, hopefully we could get this video done in a couple of days and get it out to you by next Friday. So uh, talk to you later. I uh, hope you like this video. Please like and subscribe if you like it because I've lost like 40 subscribers in the last two months and I have no idea why. See you guys in the shop. Growing up in Canada, I have this one memory of the railroad. I wasn't one of those rail fans from day one kind of guys. Heck, I got into this hobby at 30. Anyways, every weekend I had hockey in the winter time and in the summer it was the racetrack with my grandfather. You know, going down to the food truck, getting bacon sandwiches, racing the horses. Traveling to both seemed to always pass this particular stretch of the CN Yards in downtown London, Ontario, Canada. A string of three or four Russell snow plows were stored there, and the memory of those plows holds strong today. So when my local hobby shop announced a custom run of the new snow plow from Wal Walther's Proto, I jumped at the chance to get one, even if it is a plow from Hamilton. The Toronto, Hamilton and Buffalo was a local railroad that ended operations back in 1987. So the custom limited run of the TH and B model has a few differences from the basic model uh, available to you. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. We have a lot to cover. I read that this model is a new run of a model first produced 20 years ago. I looked around the shop because I knew I had two plows sitting around here. I have those old plows from 20 years ago and I can do a small comparison here. But now, but some of the listed differences of features are as follows on the website. Details specific to the prototype, we'll go over that a little bit later. Factory installed grab irons made of wire. Ultra smooth rolling metal axles and 33 inch wheel sets. Custom front truck for tighter curves, thin profile stirrups, brake detail underneath, detailed flanger. But I have much more planned than to reread all the details shown on the manufacturer's site. I'm a good craftsman, goddammit. But really, let, let me finish with what Walther says about the model. The prototypes were in service from the 1920s to present day. 
fully assembled, railroad ready, undecorated kits also available. Proto Max metal knuckle couplers. Railroad specific details, see through steel or original wood roof locks. Sturdy hinged and positionable, positionable side wings in two styles with wire cross braces. Fitted with original or one of three styles of light headlights as appropriate. Bettendorf or roller bearing rear truck. The paint schemes of the model. We have a CN number 55436. Uh, Northern Pacific number 35. We've got CNO SP number SP21. Uh, PRR number 497800, uh, MP, UP, MPX 186, and SO X 187. And then there's the undecorated kit. So this is the point of the video where we think we're finished and this model goes back into the box and under the shelf. Well, you're wrong about that because I found this prototype photo of my own plow. Whoa, I see some rust, boys. It is photos like these that make me want to weather this plow. Time to go and get some supplies. 20 years ago today. This is a model that you had to make out of the box. You put together. Uh, has the same size trucks on each side. Uh, but they're all it's all plastic. This is a solid headlight here, so it'd be really hard to put the LEDs in. Uh, this is a ho hollow uh, headlight, so it was real easy to fit in the Pico LED. Wire grab irons. The thin stirrups, as they said. The proto coupler. Uh, the see-through metal walkways. Uh, you can see some white around here. This is from me uh, putting the light inside the, the lamp. I kind of damaged a little bit. That was from me. Uh, the flanges have a wire hinge so that you can move it. It's got a, a wire support bar here. Um, lots of detail. Uh, you could glue them in the out position. Uh, yeah, I really like this model. Got a uh, underneath detailing that you can see the custom truck in the front for tighter cor corners, tighter corners. That's yeah, a really nice model. Uh, there's a lot of differences between this one and this one. This one has uh, molded in grab irons. Uh, the flange is completely square. It doesn't have a hinge. It just kind of sticks in there. It gets glued however you want it to get glued. Otherwise, it's going to fall off. Uh, no windows. Uh, so there's a lot of differences. A lot of differences. Uh, it's a big upgrade. So we're first going to dull coat this model, get the shine off of it. Uh, then we're going to get use uh, acrylic raw umber to pit the chipped paint. And then we're going to use uh, Windsor Newton water soluble oils to uh, get that nice weathered rust look. Uh, this is, uh, you know, the, the rain. The, this will make the pits and where the chipped paint is, and this will show where the rain ran through it. Uh, I got a nice fan brush for this. Um, I got a couple of thin, thin tip brushes for my pitting. I have my file just in case I need it, my uh, powders brush, I've got my uh, scraping tool just in case I want to take off some of the lettering, 
and my thinner for my solubles. And that's basically it for this build. Uh, I'm going to, uh, so we reviewed the kit. It's a nice kit, 10 times better than what was available before. Uh, now I'm going to show you uh, our uh, prototype photos and show you what we're going to be doing. First, we're going to be uh, using this photo to uh, pit the front of this blade right along here. Oh, if you get a feel on the old model, you can barely feel the rivets. But this model, you, the, they really stand out. That's going to be a lot of fun. So I'm going to pit that. I've got some scrapes to put along the edge of this and have that rusted. And uh, we've got to put a nice fade around the red all the way around. And I also have to put uh, plywood over the windows here and here. We'll get to that later. Uh, but for now, that is the Walters Proto Russell Snowplow. This is the custom uh, TH&B version. It's not really available. This was done by a custom uh, from a local hobby shop, did a custom run. However, we've got all those models that uh, I showed you earlier. We're going to close out this video with uh, me talk, showing you the pictures and just talking about what I did. Because I, I, I'm not really the most experienced at this uh, stuff yet. So I, I don't really want to tell you how, how to do it because I don't know how to do it yet. Uh, what you're looking at here is the acrylic uh, raw umber. Um, it adds a base, a solid base color to add the rust to. Here you can see I added the oil um, rust color. The oil rust color has been added. Touching it along the edges of the metal where the paint would chip off. Uh, here's the fade uh, using a chalk and a makeup brush. Uh, the fade comes right off after you add the dull coat again, so, uh, I don't know. I'm going to have to do something to make it look like that permanently, uh, more experience. However, it's looking pretty good and pretty close to the prototype if you, if you ask me.